All right, so One Night Love Affair off of Reckless by Brian Adams, 1984. Um, this is just another great song uh, that he co-wrote with Jim Valance, who is a really skilled and knowledgeable uh, musician, songwriter. He's written songs for like a ton of people. And I always feel that Brian Adams' best stuff was with Jim Valance, and especially this album. I think this was actually his peak. Just awesome. I mean, it's just my taste, right? In my opinion. But I love the stripped down, the band, you know, the two guitars, a bit of organ here and there, some keyboards here and there. Um, Dave Taylor on bass, great bass player. And uh, on this track, it was Pat Stewart playing drums. He's with the odds, and he did some stuff with Colin James, another fantastic Canadian artist. Anyways, um, this song is in the key of B, okay, and it's really... Uh, it's all about the sounds more than it is like the complexity because there's really it's a very simple song So what we're gonna do here is um, we're gonna start the song with this. Uh, it's in the key of B Okay, so we're gonna do this B bar chord and we're just gonna go Right just two down strokes And then we're gonna go to E And do it down up. Okay, and the sound I've got here. Uh, I've got a bit of chorus and a bit of delay and those guys liked lots of reverb well i think bob clearmount the producer <laughs> like lots of reverb on the guitar so it's quite a bit of reverb a little bit of delay a little bit of chorus now you don't have to have the chorus i just put it on because it kind of gives it a bit more bite right okay so we've got that right it's the intro and then um the verse is we go to this um a g sharp minor Right? And then an F sharp, and we do the slick. Which is just hitting the bass note, and then E, B, G, E, right? And then E, and then back to that. Okay, so that's the verse, and in the background, there's another clean guitar that is just going like this. You can barely hear that. So that's just second fret of the E string, and it's between the B and the E strings. Right? Doo -doo, doo -doo. And that just repeats. So it's like. And then we eventually get into the chorus. So we're. Um, okay, and the chorus modulates to D. And that is kind of the key of the song. Um, it's the hook of the song, right? And it's funny because there is another Vancouver band called Loverboy. Everybody's probably heard of them. And Working for the Weekend, right? They had a huge hit with that in 1981. And you can tell that uh, Brian Adams and Jim Valance used that song as a blueprint for this song. And I know you, you may never relate the two because they're very different feels, right? Because you've got... Uh, Right, that's the verse, and you know, very, I mean, it's different feel, but the same chords really, right, as this. And then, um, right, and you know, this song, um, we're in, we're there. What, 
it modulates to D, right? Which is a big hook of the song. Anyways, um, so once we hit the D, like if you watch Brian Adams play this, he, he does the D like that, and then when he trails it down, which is like a D over C sharp, he's doing it with his little finger like that, right? Now for me, I, I hate doing that. I always find that super awkward. So when I play the D, I just bar here and play the D like that, right? And then I can just use my third finger to go down. No strain, it's real easy, right? So we're coming out of this. And it's just, it's D, D over C sharp, and then it's B minor. And then a G, like that. That's like the ACDC G. So we're muting that A string with the fleshy part of that middle finger. And we're getting uh, B3 and E3 up, up top there. And we're just... Dun, 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 that kind of a feel, right? And the second time through, we're going to do that instead of just going. We're going to go. Right? So we've, when we hit the G there, we're going to go from the B. To the A, right? So. We're into this again. Two G's to end, right? And then we're back into B, E. And that just repeats. And that's all there is to this song, right? For the main rhythm guitar. Now, the other guitar is virtually identical except in the chorus it's going to do this uh, like line so it's just bass note backwards from the high E right bass note backwards from the high E and then B minor bass note but here this is the trick here right and this is a big part of like the flavor of that chorus it gives it that sort of Right? We're using that open E there, right? So we're kind of getting a, what is that? It's like a suspended, the suspended note as well as the minor third. Right? So he goes, right? So. And then G. So that's how that bit goes. And that, to me, that that chord there is really important to the song. It really changes the whole vibe of it, right? It gives it a sort of mystical sort of a, a feel, right? And then, of course, it does the same thing. Ends up on back to the B, the E, right? And then um, we, we get into the solo stuff and the fills, right? So I'll go over in a second. But over top of the solo... There's another guitar part comes in and it goes like, yes. Really nice. You can barely hear it, right? But when I was like making my demo of this song, uh, it just didn't sound right until you got, until you threw that in there, right? So it's just the B chord and we're going, right? And then we play the E. Right? And then, 
All right, we're getting the G sharp there. And then we just double. Really, really nice part there. You know, and that's the thing about his band and <laughs> the producer, Bob Claremont. They just come up with the greatest parts, like really simple, but super effective, right? Okay, and then we get into the solo. I'm just going to turn off my chorus just to get into the solo. And the solo starts like, like this. Okay, so we're just, since we're in B, we're in the B major. B major pentatonic sort of shape. We're throwing in that fourth sometimes, right? Um, and so we're pretty straight ahead, right? Then, and getting that slide, there's a couple of slides in here which are really important. Like, it's very subtle, right? But it's stuff like this that is the difference between sounding good and expressive and just sounding like normal. <laughs> um, so he goes... Right, little hammer there. Right. Right. So that little slide there, right? Makes all the difference. Slide. Slide. And then he does this. Really cool lick. Just bending up to that D note while the band's over the E chord, right? You get that kind of seventh in there, right? It's really, really kind of cheeky lick. And then we're going to come up here to the B note, 12th fret. We don't rake actually, it's just the single note. And it's really important to do this on the B string, right? You don't want to go. You know, you don't want to don't do that. You want to play it all on one string because it gives it an expressive vocal quality, right? So we've got... You know, that, I love that. Those are my favorite notes of this solo. It's just so good, right? And we got... Just a full step in. And then we're going to end up on this, right? Because the band's on the F sharp there. Right? So. Band goes to E and we're here, right? Um, this is the F sharp. And then we do that bend there, ending on the F sharp, which is... Right? <laughs> you know, once you've been playing guitar one, you start seeing all these shapes, right? Just, they're everywhere. So the F sharp is the third of, of D, and we're modulating to D, right? So... And you just put some vibrato on that, let it fade out. And then he just goes, right? That's just a 16 to 14 on the G. Think in that shape, right? Right? That major, major pentatonic shape, right? So, and then, that's slide in to 14 G14. Right? That's 16, 17 on the D. Back to 14 on the G. And that's a hammer. And just another hammer. Ending on 
B, what is that? <laughs> 15. Then, right? Okay. Really nice guitar playing, so melodic, you know, simple, right? There's nothing crazy going on here, but the tone he's getting and just the singing nature of these parts, right? Just awesome guitar playing. My favorite kind of guitar playing, you know? Um, just singing melodic type stuff, okay? So um, from here, Then we do the octave, the A there on G14, and the A up here on G17, or E17, okay? Right? And we just kind of hammer away on that, okay? So... Then we go way up here. <laughs> Love this part, right? So simple, but just so beautiful sounding. We're doing a half step bend on the 20th, uh, <laughs> 21st fret. Try and get some vibrato on that, right? And then the 20th fret. And you can either bend up to that one too, like, And then it kind of just slides out, right? And then we're here. Back to the G string, um, 16 to 14. Then, right? Right? Remember these shapes, right? Okay, so from here, um, let's go. Twice that, right? Then we go. And this to me is just, it's, it's Journey, right? It's Journey. And um, these guys were toured with Journey just before this album came out. So you can see there's definite Journey influences here. So, right, we've got that shape. And we're just going, right? Then we're going to go right and then I just kind of finish it off with like that you know you just jam it out at the end right okay so let's just go through that whole solo so starting in B right ahead a bit.
and you just kind of jam it out like that right to the end anyways uh you know <laughs> again excellent playing by keith scott just a great guitar player great tone great feel you know great melodic sense right and um anyways that's about it for this one really really good song and uh, really well put together played by excellent musicians with a great producer and uh, just reckless to me it's just just it's one of those um, perfect albums you know it's, everything is so good on that record the songwriting everything anyways i hope you uh, enjoy this lesson i hope it gives you a little bit of insight maybe into how this song was put together in my opinion of course right and uh, yeah we'll talk to you next time